Today, I want to start out by talking about regions and how they apply to Iowa. There are many ways of formulating regions. Some regions are embedded in landscapes. Others are political or administrative. Others defined by population or some measure of density. But it's always people who decide where the regions are. There may be different factors they're looking at. Then we'll look at, uh, in this, uh, this uh, lecture, which will be in several parts, we'll look at quite a few ways of understanding Iowa by examining regions. So you'll see on this map uh, that there are eight physical regions of Iowa, some quite large, others quite small. And we'll start with the one in the kind of the center top, the Des Moines lobe. This was formed by the last glacier in Iowa 12 to 15,000 years ago. It left a quite flat surface with a lot of minerals. Uh, th thus, it has become a very rich farmland, but with few trees except in river valleys. And it tends to be uh, kind of, um, you know, puddle up quite a bit when it rains a lot. So a lot of water runs off and uh, there's a lot of tiling in this part to get the water to run off into the stream beds. And that's uh, one of the issues that we have to deal with, the flooding as we uh, go along. Now to the right of that is the Iowan surface, the headwaters and tributaries of several rivers. Uh, the Iowa River is, uh, goes through that, the Cedar River, the Wapsipinicon, the Mokokota Rivers, uh, four rivers in kind of uh, northeastern Iowa. And this was shaped by an earlier glacial period about 20,000 years ago. Um, this area is hillier than the Des Moines lobe, um, and it has, as I said, all these different streams. Now, to the right of that, in the northeastern corner of the state, is the what they call the Paleozoic Plateau, often referred to uh, more, you know, since settlement, since a European settlement, as Little Switzerland because of its rugged, hilly landscape, which is not really favorable to farming. Uh, I think there are a lot of uh, cows, perhaps, and a lot of milking goes on up there, dairy farming but uh, it's not really good for corn and soybeans. And of course, it's a, it's a nice uh, recreational area. It's a nice tourist area. This area was not flattened by glaciers, but you can find fossils there that date from sea floors 300 to 500 mil million years ago. Um, so it's, uh, you, know, you can see the remnants of very ancient uh, geological formations. You might be surprised to realize that Iowa was covered by a sea that long ago. Then over to the other side, to the far northwest, are the Northwest Iowa Plains, characterized by high rolling hills and lots of luss, and that's wind-blown granular sandy soil that's uh, very characteristic of the western part of the state, uh, soil that's been blown over from the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Wyoming, Montana, very dry areas that uh, where uh, the soil just kind of loosens up and it blows and it, it hits over on this side of the Missouri. The largest geological region is the southern Iowa drift plain. This area was covered half a million years ago by an ice sheet that extended into Missouri. In the 500,000 years since then, deep valleys have been etched into the landscape, particularly in the western part of the state. The hilltops are characterized by luss soils, so that those soils that blew off the, the plains into Iowa. To the far southwest is the Missouri alluvial plain, which you might remember was totally flooded throughout the summer of 2011 by snow melt and heavy rains in the upper northern plains. Above the plain, this alluvial plain, are the Lys Hills, shaped by wind-blown sandy dirt from the plains over thousands of years. So it's very, very characteristic of Iowa. And uh, the only other place where there's as much Lys as there is in Iowa is in, um, in China, in the upper reaches of the, the Yellow River of China. But there's Lys in other places also. Finally, in this far southeast is the Mississippi alluvial plain, including the lower reaches of the Iowa and Cedar Rivers. Now these regions, these, all these regions, shape the possibilities of life of all kinds. Uh, botanical life, biological life, human life, agricultural and urban life in Iowa. Uh, this is kind of the, the foundation on which Iowa culture and life is built. Now will move on to the next slide here. And this shows elevations throughout Iowa. It's very interesting to relate this to the previous slide, partly because it doesn't seem to quite fit. Uh, it shows some real differences. 
Starting from the west, the Missouri alluvial plain is clear. That's uh, very similar to what we saw in the previous map. And the Liss Hills that rise up from it, you can see those hills rising up from the alluvial plain uh, from Monona County and uh, the southern part of Woodbury County on down. Uh, the high western plain shows up quite clearly, those uh, areas there. And if you're very up, up north, uh, uh, the highest point in Iowa, about 1,600, 1,700 feet. You know, it's not a mountain, but it's the highest part of Iowa. Uh, I think it's a hog farm, actually, north of Sibley. And then Iowa just generally kind of slopes to the southeast, um, which is the direction of most of the rivers east of that ridge. And I often call that the, the Continental Divide. It's not the Continental Divide, but it's the divide between the Mississippi and the Missouri rivers. Uh, it's a very distinctive part of Iowa if you go through there and uh, see where, um, you know, where you, as you're climbing up, going to the west, and all of a sudden you're going downhill. Uh, that's the divide. And it, uh, this divide, the rivers then flow through the Des Moines lobe. You can see there out in the middle, um, down through the southern Iowa drift area into the Mississippi alluvial plain. And little Switzerland, in the very northern, northeastern part of the state, that Paleozoic era doesn't really show up too well, except that it's not the highest part and it's not the lowest part of the state. But, uh, you know, it's very hilly and rugged and a very interesting part of the state to visit. So we'll stop here and we'll continue on with some other thoughts about uh, regions in Iowa in the next presentation.